Right, in this video we're going to be talking about barrel cleaning uh, and barrel care. Uh, obviously after a long day shooting uh, there's going to be a lot of deposits that are going to build up in the inside of your bore of your gun um, and these need to be removed, um, A for safety and B for the longevity of your barrel. We do this here at Purdy using rods. Um, there's three different rods that you generally find uh, in your gun case. The phosphor bronze brush which is the first brush we're going to use. Second one you'll find you'll have a uh, brass jag as we call it and the third one you'll probably find is the final drying cotton jag. So we'll work through this in process. First off uh, we go into the phosphor bronze. And the reason we use that actually is because it's there to break up any deposits that are in the barrel. So first off we spray some uh, gun cleaning lubricant and then we move straight on to the uh, phosphor bronze. So clamping the barrels down on a soft surface such as a table with a cloth on it or something soft and spongy like this so you don't damage your barrels. Start from the top barrel or the right barrel. Move the rod vigorously up and down the tube. You need to make sure that you're going to be hitting the chokes and the chamber as well as the main bore. And you need to be quite vigorous with it so you're actually breaking up the deposits that are in there. They can be quite stubborn. Um, so you might want to spend a bit of time on this part of the job. Once you spend a bit of time breaking up the deposits in there with, with the fossil bronze, you can then move on to actually cleaning out the deposits. There's two things you can use for that. You can either use a uh, cleaning cloth, which comes on a roll, or you can get some patches which are already pre-cut to size. Either do the job just as well as the other. So, you take a piece of the rag, Fold it in half, and you take your brass jag cleaning rod, put a piece of rag through like so. You don't need to wrap it around, all right? generally just leave it like so. And again, it's back to the process of actually running the rod up and down the barrel. You see the deposits of lead and plastic, etc., coming off onto that rag. Once you get that amount of dirt on it, it's time to throw that away and pick up another piece. As you continue to clean, You'll still notice deposits coming out. As I say, it can be quite stubborn stuff, um, but you will notice the rag starts to become cleaner as you continue the process. As you're going along, keep continuously looking down the bore of the gun um, to make sure you are actually removing what you're intending to remove. Right at the very end of the process, just make sure the bore is nice and clean and dry. Just run the cotton down just to make sure you're all happy and it's all dry and stuff. You don't want loads of oil in your bore. Um, you just want it nice and, uh, nice and dry in there. So that's the cleaning of the barrel tubes themselves. There's also other areas within the, within the barrels that need to be looked at as well. We'll start off down at the breech end. Down at the breech end, this is an over and under 12 bore purdy. Um, the luggers, as you'll see, part of the ejector system which throw the cartridges out of the gun, um, can also get a lot of deposits and dirt underneath them. They're very easy to push forward. Um, you can do it with your thumb. Um, so if you just push the leg of the lugger up like so, on each side, pull them up from there and then you can actually clean underneath them. Um, looking at this one here, there is quite a lot of old oil, um, black deposits, uh, God, just build up of nasty stuff. So, paintbrush is cut down, um, so it's quite bristly and quite stiff. First off, start just by giving it a good brush out in there. They will move up and down, so sometimes you will have to push them back out again. Again, at this point you can use some uh, cleaner. Not too much, I really urge not to go too wild with, with cleaner on stuff. Actually you can dry it out um, rather than doing what it's intended to do. Making sure then that underneath the luggers is clean, the lugger bed itself, so the area where the luggers sit into is nice and clean and there's nothing nasty still lurking in there. You can also use uh, a cotton bud to get into more of the stubborn areas, so really getting right into the edges. Working the way around all in all the crevices where Stubborn stuff can sit and build up, and into the rim, and all the way around the rim down here as well. You can see that from that there's quite a lot of dirt coming off of there. It's important that you're drying out underneath before you re-lubricate the luggers. Again, this does not need a lot, so a tiny little spot on each of the lugger legs, and just push those back into position, all nice and clean. Again, I just usually just run a piece of rag into the chambers there to make sure there's no excess oil getting into the chambers, therefore running down the barrel. Um, and I'll just have a quick look to make sure there's nothing going down there. Lastly on, uh, well, nearly lastly on barrel cleaning, 
is the removable chokes. Some guns now we're seeing quite popular um, having removable choke systems fitted. Great for the versatility of the gun, um, but they need their own form of, of care. If they're shot, wiped through as I've already demonstrated and left in the gun, they can cause uh, rust, they can get stuck, um, and you really, really don't want that to happen. They're an absolute nightmare if they get completely stuck in there. So again, it's very important to take those out, clean them off, dry them off, re-lubricate them and put them back in. To do that, supplied with any, any removable choke gun, uh, there is a key. Now it generally looks like this, um, and it's a very simple process to remove the chokes. Place it in like so, you don't have to hit it, um, it's quite there, it's a nice friction fit, and you give it just a turn, and you wind the choke all the way out, like so, and out it pops. For obvious reasons, you can only do this one at a time, otherwise they'll jam on top of each other, and they need to be fully removed before you remove the other one. Place the barrels out of the way like so, take the choke, Check it for any damage, they are quite thin, so they can sometimes get dented if they're dropped or, or squashed, so it's quite important to look after them. Check it all for any damage. The actual internal area should have been cleaned when you were doing with, with the brushes and the rods earlier on, so there shouldn't be an issue to worry about that. Again, taking a clean piece of rag, really important just to wipe everything over, just to make sure there's no build up of any, again, lead, unburnt powder, etc, etc. Making sure they're nice and clean and dry. Checking down them in the light to make sure there isn't anything nasty inside them. Just making sure they're all nice and dry. Supplied with removable choke guns is this little red pot here. In that there's a high temperature melting point uh, grease. It's blue in colour. Um, and this is the lubricant for the actual chokes themselves. So you take a tiny little daub on your thumb, like, or, thumb or your finger like so. Firstly, place it all the way around the threads. And secondly, spread some out over the body of the choke. Doesn't have to be any extreme. If you put too much on, it squirts out into the bore of the gun, and again, you end up going down it with your rag, uh, with your rod. So you need to make sure that there's not too much of it that's going to squirt out all over the place. It's always worth again just checking and making sure the threads are clean in the barrels as well. So with your finger, being very careful, a piece of rag over the end of it, just run the rag around the internal part of the thread. If you wish to, you can run that through there just to make sure where the choke's going to sit is nice and clean and dry. As I say, reinsertion of the choke is the same as the re removal, just in reverse. It's quite a common misconception that these have to be mega, mega tight in the end of the barrel. They really don't. A good nip, like so, is more than adequate. If you over tighten them, okay, they stay in there, but they could be staying in there for a lot longer than you want them to. So it's important that you get them up to a good dead stop. Um, and then don't over tighten the, the chokes. Again, just making sure there's no build up. You will get a little bit of grease that comes out the top end of this as you wound it up, so that's wiping that off of there. Last and by no means least is the external areas of the barrel, the blacked areas if you like, and the silver areas here called the steels uh, which go into the action. Again, back to our paintbrush. Just have a good brush around in there. Just making sure, and this, this goes for a sporter gun, a side by side gun, or an over and under gun. Um, have a good brush around any crevices where any dirt or stuff can get built up. Again, any small areas, Q-tip or cotton bud. And just a wipe over to make sure there's nothing excess going on. The blacked areas, clean rag again. Um, tiny squirt of gun oil. Just very lightly wipe over the external surface of your barrel. You do get build up on the outside. If the gun's got wet as well, you will find that water's got into quite a number of these areas. So not only is it a process of drying them out, cleaning them, it's also a case of protecting them for the future with a little bit of oil on there. At the same time, just keep an eye out for any damage that you might see going on the barrels. Any scratches, dents, dings, etc. Um, barrels do pick up dents, um, if they do pick up quite a nasty dent, I uh, recommend they came back to us just for an assessment of them. Um, and that is barrel cleaning, that's actually now ready to go back into the case uh, for the next shoot. So.